Hey everyone! Goodness, it's been a moment since I went live. Um, sorry, not used to these lights. I've been on vacation, um, and I just got back over the weekend, and I haven't painted by these lights in a week. So these lights are like woo bright. Anyway, thanks for hopping on. As always, I'm trying really hard not to go live at midnight anymore because I know that's kind of annoying. <clears throat> so just got everybody in bed and I'm here. So just going to hang out a little bit. I'm getting my palettes ready. I'm going to be painting tonight on, um, so I'm going to do the Northern Lights or Galaxy Painting, whatever you want to call it. Let me pull out the one I've already done. So this one, I'm going to do one of these tonight. It's not going to look necessarily exactly like this. We'll see where, where we land. Um, but I'm going to do that and I'm going to do it on doo -doo -doo, arches. Yeah, I'm pulling out the big daddy. Um, Arches Rough Finish. Um, I picked this one up about a week ago and I've been painting on it here and there and I forgot how much I love Arches Rough. So yeah, really excited about that. I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna actually use the same exact palettes I used for the first painting. If you're just hopping on, I'm just explaining, we're gonna be working on, we're gonna do one of these tonight. I wanna show you how I did it. Cause it wasn't terribly specific when I posted that one here on TikTok. So I wanna kind of walk you through step by step. And um, so the palettes I used, I don't know if y'all saw, I swatched out this Mondo Llama set from Target last week. Um, I'm pretty impressed with it. It's really, really nice. The brushes are terrible. Don't use the brushes. I don't, I mean, in my opinion, they're terrible. So I'm going to use this set tonight. Um, and then I used the quarter inch dagger and then my liner brush. Um, and then I also, for the fluorescent green, I used my, um, Jasper Stardust handmade watercolors so that is what we're using tonight I'm gonna spray these bad boys down I am gonna flip the camera soon how y'all doing it's been a while any questions anything you're just dying to ask me <laughs> all right well let's do this let's get this camera flipped around and get painting. I'm so excited. Woohoo! All right, friends, if you're just joining, I'm flipping the camera around and we are going to be painting. And remember, I record these lives and then every Saturday at noon Eastern, I post a TikTok live on my YouTube channel. So don't feel like you have to um, paint with me. Don't feel kind of, con you know, conflicted because eventually this live will be on YouTube. So you can actually watch live, ask questions live, and then re-watch on the replay and paint with me then. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's flip this thing around. Okay. I got to move some stuff. Things are just crazy on my painting table right now. I'm going to put this one up here so we can have a looky-loo at that as needed. All right. I wish you could see this palette better. I wish that silly um, brush cavity were on the other side, but you know being kind of specific there. Let's push this up. 
Hello, hello. I'm going to pull this all up on my other device. <clears throat> Maybe we should get some music rolling. Hey, y'all, if you're just hopping on, I am, oh, goodness gracious. I am just getting started here, so bear with me. I am pulling up some music for us to kind of chill to. And then we're going to be doing a Northern Lights painting tonight, friends. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, <clears throat> all right, here we go. be right there with you friends sorry I'm a little like a little behind today a little behind a little behind <laughs> so the painting that you're seeing right now friends um, is one that I worked on today got a little something going I'm gonna be posting that soon all right let's dive in all right, so I'm using the Arches um, Rough. Just get this one off of here. And let's get into it. I love this little block. She's a little square. Just super cute, perfect size. Oh my gosh, I love it. I'm going old school and using Crayola 16 watercolors with the dagger brush, so good. Freaking awesome. All right, friends, spray down your watercolor palette. Spray them up. Give them a chance to kind of get nice and syrupy, juicy, whatever you want to call it. All right. So the way that I started this the other night, and I will say this just kind of as a full disclosure, um, I have a little, like, um, oh, what are they called? It's like an embossing heating tool that I use to kind of like dry stuff when I need it dry quicker. So I am going to be using that tonight because to kind of do this and keep keep things moving, I do need to dry the surface at some point. So um, just full disclosure, um, if you want to get one of those. So spray your paper first. Don't feel like you need to spray the paper perfectly and have it all be saturated the same level of saturation no just spray your paper get that going and that's that that's that's how I started this the other day now you I love a horizon line I like to think about my page in thirds so I put my horizon line typically either at the top third or the bottom third I personally, with, with um, composition, if I am asked, Christy, like, what do I do with composition? I always tell folks to never do anything. And now, you know, you know me, I'm not about rules, but one of my personal go-tos in terms of composition is to not split the page in half. It's just not as visually appealing, so... Don't, also don't feel like you need to paint to the edge, not necessary. And I am just using a variety of blues that I have. I'm using the quarter inch dagger and I'm starting to make some strokes. In some areas I'm kind of wiggling and dragging and dabbing as the paint runs out. See how I'm doing that? Look at, drag, drag, bop, 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 bop across the page. Right, you don't have to just do smooth, smooth strokes. I'm picking up a little peach right now, adding a little bit of that in here and there with a light touch. I'm not, I'm making sure to not kind of do too many strokes with this peach on my brush because it could turn kind of greeny, dingy kind of color. Um, so I'm using a light touch. I'm gonna continue down with all the blues I have. And now I'm starting to think about what's below the horizon line. So a little bit of green, 
even a little bit of blue mingled in, light touch, bounce along the page. Don't feel like you need to stay in one area for too long. If you wanna bring in a little peach down here, go for it. Every time I go off the page, I'm either loading a new color, just so you're aware of what I'm doing, or rinsing my brush. And you're gonna you hear that clanging noise. When you hear that, you know I'm rinsing my brush. So just kind of be on the lookout, the proverbial lookout for that. Now I've got some other more um, kind of like grassy greens that I'm adding in here. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of a brown, even a little bit of a black, and I'm gonna go right along this horizon line and I'm gonna dab, dab, dab. I'm using the curved edge of this dagger and I'm gonna dab. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush now. I wanna change my color. I'm just gonna use the darkest blue and a little bit of black and dab, dab, dab right along that edge with the curved edge. You could also do this with the long edge. This one, the one that feels kind of weird to use. It's, it feels like the edge you should never use, but use it. It's there for you. Okay, you kind of see what's happening here. I'm creating like this, this hedge of trees, so to speak. Now friends, if you have questions, please hit me up. This is the time for it. I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear like, why did you use that color? And doesn't this freak you out? And all the things. My page is very wet right now. Very wet in all areas. I'm going back in. Now in the sky, I in my head, I'm thinking a little more smooth. I want things to be a little more smooth than they are in the foreground here. So just something to keep in mind. I want more texture in that foreground. Now this is just the first layer. My other painting, this first one that you see up here, I did two layers. Um, the bottom most color I'm using, remember I'm using this Mondo Llama palette from Target, 20 bucks. I'm using like, it's like a grassy green and more of like, um, uh, like an emerald. And I got, I have them both on my brush at the same time in most places. And then there's also this really pretty like olive green right here that I used right here. Hey bud, do you need something? My son's coming out. Sorry, friends. Hey, what's up? The TV turned off? Ooh. Okay. Pause, friends. Got a, a TV situation. Okay. All right. Okay, so going to the questions. I can watch these back, right? I'm new to TikTok, but I need to try this later. Yes. So really, really good question. Um, so what I do with these TikTok lives, and I'm actually glad we had this moment, start letting things dry a little bit. Uh, I take these TikTok live recordings and I post them on YouTube. Um, I post them every Saturday at noon so you can, you know, paint along with those. And that's great because you can pause and stop and start and all the things. So I'm going in with my fluorescent friends. This is where things get really fun. And I am starting to add some fluorescent. Now things did start to dry a little bit. So, and I'm kind of almost zigzagging it through the sky. Thinking about the northern lights, I've seen the northern lights. This is what they do. We need a little bit of pink up here too because I did have some pink in the original and I'm gonna go back in with some blue to blend, blend, blend. But the northern lights, I said to my husband when I saw them, you know, in real life, 
I said they remind me of like piano keys in the sky sometimes. And I mean, I, I'm sure they're different every time. I saw them a few times um, and they often, every time that I saw them, um, they reminded me of piano keys. So um, like literally piano being played, right? So fun. Um, why green so bright? I'm, I'm, did you mean now or how? Um, I, uh, if you, if you meant now, um, because I want to put my green in while everything is still damp. So it blends and so it kind of mingles with the other colors and yeah. Because the thing about the Northern Lights, Aurora Borealis, whatever you want to call them, um, sometimes they're really bright and sometimes they're really soft. But whatever they are, they they aren't harsh. It's not like, at least I, the ones I've seen are not like lightning bolts in the sky. Do you know what I mean? They're not defined. Um, so, yeah. So I'm going to kind of let that go. Now things are, everything's very damp. Everything's very kind of what I would call mushy gushy kind of. I can put a little pink over here. Now that area has pretty much dried. So I need to add some water to get that to blend. These colors are lovely, but they are a little bit, they stain a little bit. So you put them on, you got to put them on and be okay with where you put them. Because they're not going to lift out very easily. A blend over here. Yeah, so it's it's like these little these little ribbons of of bright green and sometimes red and pinks and yellows in the sky and it's just like this ripple piano key like someone's playing it's like God is playing piano in the sky. It's it's pretty incredible. Do I get nervous that the black or other dark colors will overpower the lighter colors? Um, you know, there's not much about painting that I'm going to be honest and I wasn't always this way, but there's not much about my painting sessions that makes me nervous because to me, like if I don't really, if I'm not like in love with what I've done, I, I just try another one. Do you know what I mean? And so like, yeah, I don't know. It, it doesn't. I don't get too panicked about it. I really don't. And I, I don't mean to oversimplify because that is a serious question and that's a legitimate question. Um, but I try not to get too stressed about it. Now, right now, this is what I did the other day. I'm taking a little bit of gesso. You could use gouache. You could use acrylic and, what you know, a gesso is essentially acrylic. Water it down. Um, and I'm getting it to like a maple syrup consistency. And I'm really loading up one brush dipping it in the water a little bit and grabbing another brush. Now, I know that this white is going to disperse, but it's going to give a little, see what's happening there? It's, I'm, I'm tapping this color. I'm doing these, the spatter technique into wet surf, into a wet surface. So I know that it's going to disperse a little bit and I want that. I think that's going to be incredible. So I'm letting that happen. Now, this is about the time when I would um, either set this aside, work on something else for about 20 minutes, or I'll show you the little cup I use, or blow dry. Today we'll blow dry. All right. This is a great time to look. Everything is still fairly damp. If there's any weird kind of harsh moments, like I had one there where things were drying and there was kind of like a harsh edge, take clean water and kind of blend it out. There's one here. I'm going to blend that out with some clean water. See what I'm doing there? I'm just blend, blend, blend. If you want softer areas. Now there's a harsh moment up here, but I actually really like it. So I'm going to let that go. Um, you could even take a little bit of blue and black down here. If you want to start to define a little bit, you can. You don't have to. I'm feeling it, so I'm going to do a little bit more definition. It's still fairly damp, so I am still getting some blending going on there. But now I'm going to plug in my, my thing. Um, 
what is it called? It's like a heat tool. Yeah, heat tool. That's what it is, I think. I don't do embossing or anything like that. I just bought it to quick dry stuff. <laughs> so, it's a little bit loud. So, you know, bear with me. But go ahead and ask those questions, friends, while I dry this. It's going to take like a minute or two. It's so hot here in Los Angeles, I have a fan sitting next to me. I'm going to use that. Perfect. My two-year-old grandson paints with me. He likes to do water, water putters with me, Ma. Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. That's adorable. Thanks for hopping on, friends. If you're just hopping on and wondering what that horrific noise is, I am using a little heat gun to dry my painting so I can move on to the next to the next step. Here's the one from the other day. If you want to take a looky loo at that. I will say this, friends, at this stage in the painting, it's going to look scary. It's going to look messy. It's going to feel like you're screwing up. But I assure you, you are not. And I assure you that whatever feelings you're feeling, you're feeling right now in your painting or when you try this when you're on your own, they're not all as bad as they feel. So right now, like, I'll just let you inside my head. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh, I really like the way that things blended in my first painting better. Uh, you know, I wish I would have used more yellow in the foreground, but if I add it now, it's just going to look too muddy. So, like, I can sit here and, you know, just talk myself down. But you know what? This is the stage in the painting where things are, you know, kind of weird. I think I just spotted some gesso on my cat. Oh my gosh, I love it. Sorry, kitty. Is there a difference in how the paint dries when using a heat instead of air dry? I personally feel yes. Um, the heat gun, I feel like it moves the color around ever so slightly. So I feel like it smooths things out a little bit more, but some of y'all who use this technique are probably shaking your head like, is she insane? But yeah, I do feel like there, there can be a little bit of a difference. See how lovely those first spatters are? They really just almost look like little highlights. And I mean, they are a little more contrasty in some areas, but man, I love that. My paintings dry faster than I can paint. Adding more petals not helping. How to compensate for this. Do you have any fans on while you're painting? Or are you in like a desert climate? Um, but regardless, you may want to spray your paper before you start. Um, spray it and then maybe um, desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, so when I'm in Utah, in southern Utah, I have to paint faster. And or this is something I will do. I will spray my paper before I start, regardless of the style of painting that I'm after. Um, I will spray my painting with water, my page with water, and then I'll blot it a little bit just so things start off evenly damp. Turn off the fan, still dries to death. Yeah, it's the desert. Um, if you want to be a complete psycho, because this is something I would do, have a humidifier in your room and um, you know, have that running. Have that running, you know, when you're painting. It can help, it will definitely help, especially if you have it running right on the desk that you're working on. But try the spraying of the paper before you even start. Try that for sure. Okay, enough of that. My gosh, that's loud. Holy cow. All right, pretty good, pretty dry. So next we are going to use my, uh, liner brush. I'm very happy to report friends. Um, we'll try complete psycho. Yeah, I know. It's good. It's all good. So my brushes, my first 300 sets arrived today. I have not opened them. I'm like a weirdo with that stuff. Um, 
I have not opened them yet, but I'm really excited. I have to inspect them all and I actually have to add a suffocation sticker to every single one because I found out after they were manufactured that even the tiniest bags have to have a suffocation warning. So anyway, more on that very soon. Um, so I am taking black and my darkest blue. Whatever yours is, whatever your black is, whatever your darkest blue is, and I am turning my paper a little bit, no shame. And I'm gonna start adding a few tree trunks. Don't have to be perfectly straight. In fact, you don't really want them to be perfectly straight. I do thicken them a little bit at the bottom. Do some taller, do some shorter. In fact, these tall pine trees in real life are so not straight. They lean and, you know, so you want that in there. You want that natural feel. At least I want that natural feel. And then I'm going to put some smaller ones down here. Some shorter ones, little wispier ones. Ooh, I just got my arm in the pink. I am definitely not spacing things evenly. All right, that is where we're at. Hey friends, how you doing? If you're just hopping on or you're hopping in and out, my name is Christy, I am watercolor obsessed. And tonight we are painting my version of the famous galaxy night sky, um, Aurora Borealis Northern Lights thing that is so popular out there. I've been asked to do it for years. I've avoided it because I'm, I, I worry, I worry when people paint something like this, that they're so concerned about making it look like whoever they're watching, that they're, that they're getting stressed. And so I, I wanted to wrap my head around what that meant when I painted this and what I wanted to say about it before I brought it to you. All right, I'm starting the tree and I'm just using kind of the tip and or the curved edge of my dagger. Leaving negative space. These tall pines, they could be sequoias, they could just be whatever, but they are imperfect. They don't have evenly spaced leaves and branches. And so I like to make that obvious. And I'm just tapping and I'm changing the angle and I'm sometimes using my point and I'm sometimes using the curved edge. This is the curved edge on this brush. You could even flip around and use this long edge, the edge that you probably think you were never gonna use on a brush like this. Use it. And I'm just using my darkest blue, a little bit of black. Feel free, you wanna add some red in there, richen it up. You wanna add some green, richen it up. You don't have to just use blue and black. I very rarely use black, but in this particular style of painting, it felt like a moment. So I've been using it. I'm using the tip of my brush now. I'm going underneath and adding some short trees in the distance. This is very impressionistic. This is very loose. And I think the thing that's most important for me to tell you, the thing that I want you to know before anything else is that your painting of this scene does not, should not, the success of your painting should not be um, determined by how close yours looks to mine or anyone else's for that matter. 
All right, I want you to hear me again. The success of your painting when you try this out should not have anything to do with how mine looks. I'm adding some rolling mountains in here that are kind of kind of butt up to this tree because I just feel like that makes sense and feels good. I'm going right over those gesso spatter moments that I had. And yes, this is different from my original that I did the other day and posted here. This is different and different is good, different is okay. Switch it up. Every time you put brush to paper, challenge yourself, create, get, get into something you've never got into before. These mountains could be behind the pines there, there's so many ways that you can make this work. But I'm, I'm just liking how these mountain shapes are glazing over the sky. I just like how that feels. So I'm gonna keep going with it. I'm gonna float a little purple into these wet areas. The reality is whether it's a mountain scene, whether it's, you know, any trendy painting scene that you're going to get into, let, like, let's, let's talk about the roses, those super loosey goosey. We all do them. We've all seen them. We've all kind of drooled over other people's loosey goosey roses, but those can be stressful because you're always like, well, my roses don't look exactly like his or her roses as they shouldn't, as they shouldn't. Yeah, I feel like that that expectation of yourself is unrealistic. And it's when you realize that it's so unnecessary, things really can start to change for you in your journey and start to feel a lot better and a lot more free. All right, I went in and I pulled out some of that blue that I had laid down in some of these mountains. And then I dropped in, dabbed in a little pink because I like the way it felt. So get rid of that expectation that your painting needs to look like whoever you're working with, whoever, whoever is inspiring you to, to paint that particular scene. Let's just get over that, right? Let's just wash that away from our consciousness. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. I understand wanting to push yourself and get better. But the minute I feel stress in my painting, I mean, don't get me wrong. Challenge, feeling a little bit of pressure can be good for your journey, no doubt. But if that's the feeling you feel every time you sit down, I personally believe it's time to ask some questions and it's time to change some things because you can still grow and you can still advance your skills without feeling stressed and worried all the time. Hey, bud, what's up? I hit the button and it wouldn't do it. You hit the button and it wouldn't do it? Okay, I'll come and fix it for you. You can sit in here with me, absolutely. Are you sleepy? No, okay. I'm liking this tree a lot better. And try different ways to paint your trees. I'm doing this little, I'm doing in this one, I'm doing a little bit more of like little rows of branches. And I'm kind of feeling that vibe a little bit better than this one. What do you think of mama's tree? It looks cool. Thanks, bud. I can't believe you just painted that. You can't believe I just painted them all, bud. Thanks. We have a visitor, friends. We have a visitor. Right, bud? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm using just the tip of my dagger again. And I like this kind of layering of branches, so I'm, I'm keeping it going with that.
Okay, bud. You don't have to fill in all of all of these trunks with leaves because that's not really realistic of a forest so some of these you know especially in like the, this is a very like pacific northwest kind of vibe right i always felt that way um you know you've got your actual forest you've got remnants of forest fires you know some tree trunks are are the last remnant of that tree and it the rest of it's dead you know what i mean and i think when you recognize that and include that in your painting it it makes things feel and look more natural the other thing i'm feeling like trying right now is making the mountains even higher in some areas so i'm going to do that i'm going to make some even more more let's say distant mountains here and yes i'm going right over the tree trunk, I'm kind of scrubbing a little bit with my brush to soften and let that tree trunk disappear. I just kind of like where this is going. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll with it. So this is even more distant. I tend to make even more distant things like purpley, violet, to give some atmospheric perspective. I love how that early spatter that I did is shining through. <laughs> yeah, paper really makes a difference. Indeed, it does. Yes, you, you know, I find it so helpful to just hang out, watch the lives, ask questions, and then come back and rewatch when you want to do a paint along. So, for sure. What, bud? What, are you painting too? Are you painting? I love it. All right, friends, I'm adding some white because I wanted some highlights. I also want, oh, oh gosh, look at that. I wanted a way to kind of cover up these trunks that weren't letting me, remember I said this one palette is high staining. The colors really stain the page. Well, the black is especially staining in this particular situation. So I'm adding some of my gesso mixture into this wet mountain and oh my heavens it's doing some pretty things it's doing some pretty things and i'm just gonna take some pink and work it down into the white and let those two dance a little bit i'm not gonna force the issue too much but look at that now i've got a little bit of shine going on this page so i'm gonna tilt this up going upstairs i'm running running upstairs to grab the heat <laughs> i love it to grab the heat love that so much that worked out for me so think about what you when you do this if you're not painting with me right now how would you do yours differently what about mine do you not like it's Think about these things. You might be sitting there thinking, well, I would have done this differently. Well, by all means, remember that and go do it. My way isn't the only way, isn't the be all end all way. And I want you to get used to that. Whoever you're watching, you can admire someone. You can really look up to them, but theirs isn't the only way. What's your way? What's your way? Maybe you wouldn't do these mountains. Maybe you would do smaller scale trees. I really upped the scale of the trees. I used gesso. Yes, the, these initial spatters, I used gesso into very damp paper. Um, Cause I just like the kind of hazy look that it gives when you put the gesso into the damp paper. Buddy, do you need water? You do? Okay. Cool. Why did you see I went out to go get it? Oh, I didn't realize. I wasn't paying full attention, you know. Mm-hmm. 
I love it. My trees are purple, green, and magenta. Well, that is fantastic. That's good, bud. All right. I'm going back to my blue and black, a little bit of pink mixture. And I'm going to add in some more tree details, go over top of some of these initial strokes. Intensify. Add a little more detail, perhaps. Just continuing, adding a little hint of a mountain there. Maybe a little one here. There we go. I'm gonna take my liner brush while things up here kind of soften or excuse me, dry and rest a little bit. And I'm gonna do some detail in the very foreground. Thank you. Oh, well, I like I've been saying, I will, um, this will be on YouTube. So don't be sad. You'll be able to watch the whole thing. So I'm going down here in the foreground and I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow Obviously, nothing would be bright yellow in the evening, but just a little hint could be fun. A little bit of texture. I don't ever see a lot of texture in these paintings. Um, they're usually very dreamy and smooth, and for me, texture is life. So I knew going into this that I would be adding texture to kind of put my signature on this style of painting. See what you did? No? Let me see. Please. Let me see. <gasps> did you do this? Can I show everybody? Yeah? I'm going to put it on the camera and show everybody what you did. Is that okay? All right. Well, I have a little guest painting with me tonight, and I just wanted to show you, you guys what, what he did. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? Now you can't see them, bud, but they can see your work. They can see it. Now tell them, don't, don't judge my mama because I'm still up. Tell them that. Don't judge my mama, just don't judge her. Just don't judge her. <laughs> see, they said, oh my goodness, beautiful, sweet. I'm so excited, love his work. This one, this says water putters because her grandbabies say water putters instead of watercolors. <laughs> nice job someone said no judgment here awesome awesome now put it over there on mama's other desk to let it dry 
Can you go tell the puppies not to bark? Can I just put it in your dryer? In my dry thing? Yeah. Here, now don't trip over the cord. Where? In there. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't want to put it. Let's put it here. I don't want to put it on. Another one says, Mom and son time is so important. Great job, Izzy. Look all those nice things they had to say about your painting. Isn't that cool? No, it's that nice. It just looks like a scribbles. It looks like a what? It does not just look like a scribbles. Izzy, Dada's artwork just went live. We're live right now. I didn't pay anything. No. I, did I say Dada's artwork? You said Izzy. Dada's artwork. Oh, Dada, Izzy's artwork just went live. Really? Yeah, oh. and he's getting lots of compliments. Can I see it? It's right Love there, you. Dada. Remember, we're live, family. Oh, Izzy, I love it. All right, friends. Now, the fun stuff. Um, thank you, baby. Is about to happen. I know it's not. Someone says, "Honey, it's not scribbles. It's perfection." It really is. That's what they said. <clears throat> anyway, the real fun part is coming, which is the final spatter of gesso. So fun. Thanks, honey. I am doing all these fun little scribbles here. Totally not what I did on this painting, but again, friends, this is, you know, every time you sit down, I want you to experiment. I want you to see what you can do different. I want you to make new marks that you haven't made before. See where it takes you, see how it feels. There's not just one way to make these types of paintings. There's not one way to make any painting. Is this my favorite painting ever? No. Do I think it's fun? Sure, parts of it I really like. It's about to get really good now that the spatter is gonna happen. Are you ready? I, wait, I'm not quite ready. Not quite ready for the spatter. I wanna add, and I know you're probably, some of you might be looking at this, and I'm not saying this to call you out, only to call out your mindset, okay? So please bear with me. Don't get mad at me when I say this, but I know some might be looking at this saying, Phew, she doesn't know what she's doing. That looks so different. Hear me, hear me. That looks so different than the other galaxy paintings I've seen. Do you hear? Do you hear the mindset shift that might need to happen? Yeah, mine looks different by design. And I want yours to look different by design because I'm not tethered to the woulda, shoulda, coulda, have tos of other people's work. I'm tethered to what feels good to me in the moment. That's what I'm tethered to, and that's what I want you to be tethered to. I want you to learn from others, obviously. I'm here teaching. I love to teach. But I don't want you to be stressed out because this watercolor journey is literally about the opposite of being stressed out, literally. So if it's stressing you out, something's not right. We need to shift something. Yes, I just got watercolor paper. I wanted to know really good ideas for that. Wait, there's more? Yeah, there's more. I'm gonna add a little bit more spatter it's a second layer of spatter i know a lot of people don't do the first and second layer of spatter but i like the first layer of spatter and you may want to just leave it at, at that you may think that's enough and that's fine but i like a little more contrast in my painting so getting some serious bob ross vibes well uh you know i so many people say that I sound like Bob Ross or Bob Ross's wife or the Bob Ross of watercolor. I started putting it in my bios everywhere. So, you know, that's a badge of honor that I wear proudly. So thank you for that. All right, here we go. My spatter, if you want your spatter to be finer, use more water. If you want it to be thicker, use less water. See what happens when you get closer to the page. 
I'm getting closer to the page and my spatters are getting smaller. Depending on what brush you're spattering with though, it's hard to know exactly what'll happen. So there you have a little more high contrast spatter. Now, this might take it right over the edge to a place where I'm not very happy, but I'm gonna try it anyway because I'm feeling the feels and I wanna see what happens, okay? So I'm gonna spatter a little bit of purple into the tree line where the sky meets the horizon, or where the, wow, yeah, hi. Where, hmm, a little thick, a little too thick. Blot it out. Right here is where I'm doing it. I can't, I, my words are failing me. I'm too much in my right brain. Let's see, there we go, a little bit. Go. just a little light blue there we go and you might say that's too much for me and that's fine don't do what I just did you may say and I'm wrapping up here friends but some final thoughts you may say this is too busy for me great what are you gonna do to unbusy it right you may say I don't think I like the fluorescent green. I don't think I want mine to necessarily be, uh, you know, I want more of a, a starry sky kind of vibe. Awesome. I want you to get used to figuring out what you want in your painting, not what someone else tells you to want. I am adding some light blue. I mixed a little bit of gouache with a little, or gouache, I, I do that all the time. Gesso, I mix a little bit of gesso with a little bit of blue watercolor in my little plate here. And I'm adding that in because that just feels really nice right now. Tiny little marks with my liner brush. Look at that, that's pretty. Add some texture. I think I love the green and the purple and the pinks. It's beautiful. Watercolor pencils. Uh, okay, I will be super honest. I am not the biggest fan of watercolor pencils. However, I feel like the I feel like the earth is trying. God's trying to send me um, a, a message because I get lately in the last few weeks I'm getting a lot of requests for working with watercolor pencils. So I kind of feel like. I need to pull them out. I have them. I kind of feel like I need to pull them out and and really talk about them. So um, be on the lookout for that. I'll do it. I'll do it. You know what I, I like about these highlights I'm adding? When I'm out at night, especially, gosh, when I'm in Zion or, you know, I've been in Jackson Hole, when it's a clear night, things just sparkle in a way, you know, especially with the moon shining its light down, things sparkle. And so I like kind of the sparkle that's being added and I I know I'm being so extra and I'm adding so many extra details and I'm, I know I'm going overboard, but you know what? Sometimes it makes so much sense to go overboard in a painting, add more details than you think you need, almost like you're purposely trying to muddy up a painting, but in the process, you're learning so much. Did you ever think about doing that? Did you ever think about, I'm gonna go extreme. Did you ever think about ruining a painting just so you could learn a lot from the process of ruining it? Now, I don't feel I'm ruining this painting <laughs> yet. But seriously, think about the freedom, the freedom that that act would hold for you. Just going into a painting saying, I don't really care what happens. Like if it's, if it gets ruined, it gets ruined. Much. Plugging in friends. So I'm trying to plug in. Here we go. Okay. I was gifted a huge amount of watercolor pencils. I don't know what to do with them. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna talk about them, I promise. Yes, this tutorial will eventually, 
Um, oh, thank you for the big flowers. I don't know what they mean, but I'll find out. This will eventually be posted on YouTube. I post TikTok lives on YouTube every Saturday at noon. And then I post brand new longer videos every Tuesday at noon. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm hoping I have a little scheduling snafu with my editor. I have a video editor and I don't know if we're going to get it up tomorrow at noon. We had a little miscommunication. So we'll see. Um, hi, Chrissy. How are you? This is gorgeous painting. Thank you. You do. You should try painting this later. Yes. Yeah, so it will be up. Love this so much. Yay, me either. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of, I'm really digging the highlights. I am. I, I can't lie. I'm down with it. I'm down with it. Now, you know, I want to be careful not to go overboard with the highlights, and I feel like going over there would take it overboard, so I'm going to stop. I'm actually going to pull that out. But going back to what I was saying, gosh, what freedom. Give yourself that freedom. Go into a painting. Promise me something. I'm going to do it tomorrow. Go into a painting in the next few days where you don't care. You don't care what happens. You just go into it just, you know, sorry for the phrase, but balls to the walls, like do whatever. Just have at it, have fun, no expectations. Who cares if you, quote, ruin it and see what happens. See what happens, friends. You may not love it. Do I say I love what I've created here tonight? I like it. But I had some serious fun playing around, trying these mountains, doing something different than this one. And there was so much that this painting tonight taught me. So, yeah, sorry. <laughs> My mouth gets me in trouble. But, you know, there's so much that this painting tonight taught me. You know, there's moments. And I'm, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you inside my head. I like doing that every once in a while. Like, this area right here is bothering me. It's unresolved. It looks messy. I'm not feeling it. But I don't, I don't care. I love these two trees. I was unsure about them. I love this tree and the simplicity of this one. I'm unsure about this, th these cluster of trees, but I know it could get resolved. Will I ever resolve it? Probably not. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like these are the conversations you need to have with yourself so that you can be go easy on yourself. If you watch my YouTube vid from last week, I gave you three ways for you to be kind to yourself in this journey. And my number one way is to speak, talk to yourself, talk out loud, call out the things you love. Don't always call out the things you hate. But I like to call out the things that I'm not super excited about in a painting publicly because I want you to know that even me, a professional painter, I'm going to nitpick everything I do just like you do. But I've learned how to work around that. And I've learned how to not let that bring me down in my journey. <laughs> yeah, my sense of humor um, is a little bit crass at times. So I do apologize. <laughs> anyway, friends, um... I'm going to flip the camera around because I do want to let you in on a few things. But um, if you do have to go, painting time is over for tonight. But I want to chitty chat about a few things uh, for those who do want to stick around because there's some fun stuff coming. Hi. Okay. Whew. Why are you apologizing for your sense of humor? Some of my sky looks a little UFO-ish. Nothing wrong with that. That's kind of cool, actually. Um, you're perfect just the way you are. Well, thank you. Um, okay. Couple of things. My book is starting to ship next week as far as I have been told. No more delays. July 27th. If you haven't pre-ordered yet, pre-order. And let me tell you why. Okay. 
I am going to make this announcement. If any of you are on my mailing list, my email list, you already know about this. <gasps> you got the book shipping notice. Yes. Okay. So I sent this out to our email list only so far, and we're going to do another one coming up. But if you have pre-ordered the book at all yet, and if you do pre-order it up until July 26th, you're going to email us your order confirmation, just a screenshot, whatever. Hello at ChristyRice.com. And we have 75 spots. We're not full yet. I am doing a live Zoom for everyone who pre-orders before the ship date. And we're going to do an hour. It's going to be free. You're going to be able to ask questions. It's going to be a Zoom. So you're going to be able to show me what you're painting. You're going to be able, um, you know, it's going to be like face to face. So, yeah. So get on our email list if you're not on already. Get the book pre-ordered. Send us an order confirmation and we will get you signed up for the Zoom. It's going to be in, I think, August 30th is what we're doing because we want everybody to have the book on hand so that because we're going to paint from the book. Yes, face to face. Yes. So I'm really excited. So if you've already pre-ordered, I'm just going to repeat it because I see a lot of people hopping on. If you're going to pre-order, pre-order now before the 27th email hello at christyrice.com and we will get you on the list we have we're sending out the zoom invites in like a big group so yes email email because 75 spots and that's it that's it i don't know exactly where we're at now but i think we're about ha at half capacity because i only announced this to the email list so far so soon in a couple of days, I'm probably going to announce it to um, very soon, probably like tomorrow or the next day. I'm going to announce it on Instagram and here on TikTok, like in an actual TikTok. So it's going to, my guess is that it will fill up, but you know, who knows? So um, do that. And um, another announcement, is it from Monumental? It is. It does come... <laughs> So my, my MailChimp, I use a, a tool called MailChimp to send out emails. And my account is through my wedding business. So it is a Momental Designs email that you're receiving it from. I have to figure out how I can change that. So, super annoying. Um, but I think I have to pay more money monthly to do that. And I really don't want to pay more money monthly. So, uh, anyway. <laughs> Um, next announcement is that I had, I ordered a thousand sets of the paintbrushes and I had 300 shipped by DHL to get to me quicker. And then I had the other 700 sent by boat. So they're going to be coming along, but the ones by DHL arrived today. So I am going to be opening those tomorrow and I'm going to do a little video so keep an eye out for that and next week I'm going to be doing a bunch of lives to celebrate the book and I am going to give away a book or two or three and I may be giving away a paintbrush set so some of you might be getting a paintbrush set if you catch the live well before anybody in the world has one besides me. Just saying. Yes. <laughs> so keep an eye out. Get on the email list because we're going to send out a schedule of the lives. We're going to do lives on Facebook, Instagram, here on TikTok, and a YouTube stream. And I'm going to be doing giveaways of brushes and books on all of those lives. So I don't have the schedule yet. We're finalizing it tomorrow. But we're going to send an email schedule out. But only the only way you're going to get that for sure is if you're on the email list. I will probably post the schedule here somehow, but it's a little tricky. Um, like, I, you'll know when I'm going to do a TikTok live because I'll schedule that and you'll see it on my page. But the other lives on the other platforms, you may not see that here. So get on the email list. Head to the link in my profile. And there's a button that says sign up for the email list if you haven't already. All right, any more announcements?
That's enough, right? Poof, that's enough. All right, let me show you these two side by side and I'll let you, y'all get to bed. Wow, my face was really close to the screen. Sorry about that. So this was the one from the other day and this is the one from tonight. I'm, I'm really feeling this one. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. <laughs> Thank you, friends. Thank you. Thank you for being here with me. You are very welcome. Thank you for hanging out. Yay! I'm glad you like them. I avoided these with like the plague for a while. Just like I'm avoiding the whole watercolor pencil thing. But I gotta stop. I gotta stop avoiding things. I gotta practice what I preach. So, anyway, friends, have a wonderful night wherever you are, rest of the evening, or if you're like, I gotta go to bed, sleep tight. Um, I will see you tomorrow here. I'm always posting here, you know. I'll see you in email. And uh, follow me on Instagram, same name, Christy the Painter. I'm still doing the World Watercolor Month painting a day thing over there. So check that out, really fun. I always catch you at the end. Subscribe to the YouTube channel because like I said, these lives, I rebroadcast them um, on YouTube. I post them every Saturday at 12 noon. And um, fingers crossed that my editor got my next YouTube video ready to go for an upload tomorrow as scheduled at noon. So fingers crossed, we'll see. All right, friends. Take care. Happy painting.